put a sling on it more for convenience. More for convenience, because uh, shotguns for me are, you know, for the most part, home defense. That's how they fit into my system. And I, I just, when I'm teaching, the sling is nice. Most of the time it's just popped off and, and sitting there because why, why, will I, why do I need a sling if I'm, you know, employing one of these in my house? Okay. Um, some people will say, well, so I can transition to my handgun. Well, when I jump up at 3 o'clock in the morning in my tidy boys and grab my shotgun, uh, am I going to have anything else with me? No. Um, I put a side saddle on mine so I have, have extra ammunition if I need it. But really, if I can't, and we just had this discussion, uh, this is the closest thing that you're going to get to a one-shot stop. If you apply the fundamentals, you've got a good buckshot load in there, and we'll talk about those when we get into patterning a buckshot uh, this afternoon. Uh, but a good buckshot load, and you put it where it needs to go in the high center chest, or a slug in the high center chest, you have ballistically altered their behavioral pattern, probably permanently. Even with body armor. Yep, even with body armor. Especially if you put a slug in there. Oh yeah, you screw with the SA node hard enough, and they, yep. they can't stay on their feet. Yep, it, it'll shut their heart down. That's right. It'll, it'll shut their heart down. So, um, you know, if I had this thing fully, fully stocked with, with nine rounds of buckshot, I should be able to handle whatever comes to me. If I can't, I can have all the ammo in the world. Something's going sideways, and I'm probably not coming out on top anyway. Okay, so it's just kind of the same thing with my philosophy with rifles that we talked about in, in the short range rifle carbine class initially. Um, yeah, we, we wear battle belts and we have chest rigs and, and extra mag, you know, holders and all that stuff. But the reality is the way that I'm going to employ it is I grab the rifle and the 27 or 28 rounds that I have in it and, and go to work. And if I can't handle it in, in that amount of rounds, I'm probably not going to be able to handle it. For, for my situation, an individual threat assessment, I've done the way that I see that I'm going to employ this. Okay? Um, because this is a home defense shotgun, uh, I do have a weapons mounted light on it. So I have that ability to block, uh, uh, blind, distract, and disorient. Um, so, uh, this one is, is a really old Surefire 4 arm model. Uh, the one that I have on this 870 behind me is the, the Streamline, one of the newer ones. Uh, you can do, you know, mount on brackets. There's a variety of different things that you can put on there. Uh, the one thing that I will say with a weapons mounted light on a shotgun is buy a quality one. Because uh, especially if you go out and you do any, any training or practice with it, uh, it's a lot of recoil abuse on the lights. So uh, I, kn I know some people that have taken, you know, handheld lights and, and strapped them on to, to shotguns or other, other, you know, rifles or what have you, and they just won't take the abuse because they're getting a, little, a lot better, and Abner can probably speak on this just because he's more in tune with that stuff, but a lot, when the first handheld lights came out, there was a difference between the handheld lights and the weapons mounted lights. They put more recoil uh, absorbers in here so you weren't breaking the bulbs and everything under recoil. Um, so when people would take the handheld lights and, and mount them on there, they were breaking the bulbs all the time. So I would say buy a good, good weapons mounted light uh, if it fits into the role that you, you perceive. For any positions that we talked about, or if you have a sling, it's hanging from the sling. Okay. If you don't have a sling, which uh, does anybody not have a sling? I do not okay. have a sling. Yeah. Uh, Either hold it, you know, with your master grip and your support, support hand grip, okay, or if we're taking a break or if I'm talking, just set it down with the muzzle pointed in a safe direction. That's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to demo with this 20 gauge here. It doesn't have a sling on it. And like I said in the classroom, uh, for me and my purposes, the sling is just for classes and for teaching, okay. Uh, if, if you want to, you know, have a battle belt on and be able to do transitions and stuff, then obviously we need a sling. There are techniques to do it without a sling. Uh, but it's just, just for purposes of teaching. So if you don't have one, like I said, just set it down, point it in a safe direction, make sure that it's on safe. About that loading procedure, like I was talking in the classroom, we get the shotgun in our workspace. As I pull the brass down, I can feed it in, okay, from my, my side saddle that's there. Now, some people, as we get into emergency reloads and loading a single, single shell, it depends on the technique, and I'll show you guys that in a little bit, of whether you're going to come over the top or whether you're going to come from the underneath. Okay, uh, that'll dictate where where you're going to put the brass to make it make it easier for access. 
Uh, the other thing that you could think about is if you're going to carry slugs, if that's going to be part of your loadout, okay, uh, you might want to have your buckshot with the brass down and your slugs with the brass up so you can differentiate what you got for shells. Sometimes we can do it with the color of the shell, but not always. Not always. If you got a bunch of uh, old military shells like I do, the buckshot and birdshot and, and sometimes the slugs are all green because, you know, it's got to be tactical military green. So the color isn't always an indication of, of what you got. More aggressive with our stance just by bringing, bringing that strong foot back just so I can take take the recoil of that shotgun, but notice my stance, nothing nothing really changes from whether I'm shooting a pistol or throwing a punch or, or a, you know, a rifle or whatever the case may be, okay? So you'll, we'll modify your stances a little bit if need be uh, with the more harsh recoil on these shotguns, but there shouldn't be much change with them. So all the fundamentals are still, still the same. We talked about actuating the slide if you have a pump action in the classroom. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to do uh, shoot one, load one, shoot two, load two, and so on and so forth. I'll tell you the prescribed number of rounds because, like I said, one of the drawbacks to a shotgun is its limited capacity for what we have. Okay, so with that, uh, just like we would proactive reload our pistols or or our rifles uh, after a fight, okay, when we're doing that Wyatt protocol, we want to do the same thing with the shotgun. It's just a little bit more difficult feeding the beast. So I get it into my workspace. I'm just pulling out of my pocket since I don't have a side saddle or bag here. I've handed them all out. I run that action, ensure the safety's on. Okay, we went over the ready positions in the classroom. I'll probably call out a ready position just so we filter through all three of them. Okay, and then after we get, get a good warm and fuzzy with those, uh, we'll leave it up to you. It'll be shooter's choice after that, but do circulate through the different ready positions. Okay, it's gonna pee pick this piece of steel here okay, on the threat command I'm going to drive it out safety's going to go off I'm going to shoot in action follow through assess my work through my sights do I need to shoot again in this case no I don't I would conduct my scans and we'll work in Wyatt protocol as I break the cheek weld safety's going to go back on I'm going to keep my head up roll it into my workspace and since I shot one I'm going to load one. Everything's good in my world. Okay, now I'm going to shoot two and load two. I do low ready on this one. So on the threat command, it comes up. Threat. And I, oh, great teaching point. So, like I said, yeah, it was planned. It was planned. <coughs> we got to be aggressive when we, when we run the actions on these shotguns. When we don't, this is what happens. Okay, I didn't, it didn't pull the shell out of the chamber and I induced a malfunction, okay? We don't get too many malfunctions, especially on pump action shotguns, but they can happen on occasion just like this. So how do I fix it? Highly tactical. Show me yep. that again. Yeah. <laughs> Real complicated, right? Real complicated. So so there you go, you got to see a, see a malfunction clearance on a, on a shotgun. Shoot two, load two, threat. Okay, yeah, assess my work through my sights. I can conduct those scans if I want. Now I'm going to get it in my workspace. Safety is back on because I broke cheek weld. While my head is up, I'm going to load two. Everything's good. I check my world. So on and so forth. We can keep. All right, everybody look left, look right. Make sure everybody's got eyes and ears on. Go ahead and get your shotguns up into your workspace. And load up the tubes and one in the chamber. You can fully load them. Except you got like 24 you can put in there or something like that. Load up. All right, everybody get loaded up and one, one in the chamber. So your ready position of your choosing, either a high ready, a low ready, or confrontation ready, or an over the shoulder roll. Shoot one, 
load one. Assess your work through your site and scan for other threats. Hey, here we go. Threat. everybody get get a one loaded back up okay now we're going to shoot two load two okay remember shoot your two assess your work through your sights conduct your scans and when there's no more fight then get it into your workspace and load your two rounds all right here we go threat You wanted to show malfunction? Yes. Okay, thank you. Ooh, that's a, that's a somewhat complicated You got a humdinger? Yeah, it is a humdinger. We got a, we got a uh, inline. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Um, which is, uh, you do, we'll see that sometimes with the. Kind of an inline malfunction, pseudo inline malfunction, double feed. I don't know, you can call anything you want on this. Um, I'm going to be 100% honest with you, Joe. I'm making it up as I go. <laughs> um, but sometimes, you know, you see weird things, especially with with these shotguns and with this. And uh, is this a gas or inertia? It's gas. Okay. Um, this is probably a gas problem with it. Uh, for whatever reason, the extractor claw didn't didn't grab the, the brass case head on it. Um, the way I would think we're, how we're going to fix this is it's not locked to the rear. Okay, obviously point of safe direction. Uh, as far as applied tactics go, you know, we want to move offline, try and get to a piece of cover uh, <clears throat> transition. And again, something simple. <clears throat> and it, it stripped that round off because it was already on, on the feed carrier. <clears throat> and you got a shotgun that's ready to go again. So I'm sure you could have figured that out on your own, but thank you for letting us <clears throat> uh, use it as a teaching point. It had point to be a teaching here. point. Yep. And uh, that, that's one of the light loads too, right? It is, I'm gonna switch over to the, <coughs> I'm gonna try it one more time, then I'll switch over to the high velocity stuff. Yeah, yeah, so you don't have to spend all the whole time uh, doing, doing malfunctions. Okay, so cool, thank you for that. All right, everybody doing good so far? All right, let's continue on with what, what we're doing. Okay, let's cover Shoot three, assess your work through your sights, do your scans, get it in your workspace, load three. And then we'll continue on. Here we go. Threat. Oh, oh, oh. Good, Joe. Looks good. Um, so with that shotgun and the way that I run when I've, when I've got a hold of it, my trigger finger or the pad is, is on the safety. Yeah. So when I get ready to go, safety comes off as I'm mounting the gun, and then as I start to acquire my sights, I'm rolling my finger. Yep. Okay. All right, here we go. Throw it. Make sure if you got a side saddle in between, we're feeding our side saddles if that's what you want to work off of. See, that's the one thing I can't use because then my finger would end up like that. Yep. Yeah, and like for Callie, because she's right, because mine's set up uh, for right-handed. It's hitting her finger, mm -hmm. recoil. 
Uh, yeah, and it gets old really quick. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to set shotguns up for. I just can't get that one to work right. All right, we're going to go back to load one, assess your work through your sights, conduct your scans, safeties as we come off the target, go back on, and then load one. Okay, so shoot one, load one. Here we go, threat. Gotta get rid of that empty husk. So, Steve, when it when we're here, boom, as it's coming up from recoil, use that to ride that back forward. So when it comes back down, your sights settle, and I can assess my work through my sights. Okay, see, did I get that desired effect? Which, if we put a shot like that on them, we probably will with buckshot. Okay, then I can conduct my scan. Safety goes back on, and then I can get it in my workspace and load that that additional round. Okay, uh, it's just getting used to running that pump you got to do it or your your rifles do it for you okay okay shoot two load two shoot two load two threat Full C grip with the support hand doesn't really work with, with uh, shotguns. <laughs> For me, safety is odd because I'm having to do this. Yep, and, and that's... And then it's flick and then bring it up. Yep, and, and that's that's what I teach uh, with it when they're set up with a Remington is I kind of... And I, I especially high ready it a lot of times with that because I'll turn it sideways so I can have my finger on it and then flick it as I'm driving it out. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. And then, yeah, then I either bring my, my trigger finger back or, or use that thumb to flick it back on as it comes back in. Mm -hmm. um, they're just, you know, you're you're living a right-handed world. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that's Tell why, me about it. That's why the Mossbergs are, are a nice setup for, for ambidextrous because of where it's at on the top of the receiver. Yeah, that's right. Shoot three, load three. Shoot three, load three. Threat. Load him from the pocket, that's my reality. Alright, shoot four, load four, shoot four, load four. Here we go, threat. Well, I'm cleaning the paint off for you. Yes, thank you very much. Definitely got to get my belt out of the truck. You know the bandolier? Yeah. Got to get that out. I thought I could work from the pockets, but nope. No. The other one, and, and I waited to, to show people, I was talking to Paul about it. Uh, it's really a, a three gun type of loading uh, methodology for, the, for these shotguns. Uh, there's a guy now, and I don't know his name or whatever, I was watching a video recently who has adapted it for the, the tactical realm, if you will. Um, it's okay if you choose to do it, that, that that's fine. Or if you want to get into three gun uh, to load a shotgun quick, that's fine. The, the reason that I do my proactive reloads the way that I do them is because it's commonality for if I have my pistol or rifle or whatever, it's pinned under my arm in a position of strength. Uh, I've got my head up, I have good spectrum of awareness. Okay, I can see what's going on. Uh, even if I do a target glance down, I can see in my periphery, and, and it's the same with my shotgun or, or my pistol. That's the way I like to proactive reload. But if you choose to want to try this other method, um, your side saddle is going to be a, uh, and how we have it set up is going to be a big indicator whether you can do this or not. Okay, but I've got to roll the shotgun up onto my shoulder, okay? And then I either need to transfer hands and work with my support hand, or I can use my, my master grip, or I can transfer it to this shoulder so I can see it and have control, okay? So a couple different ways that you can do it, and I'll step back here. Um, we have to have some dexterity on this, and when uh, we have adrenaline in our system and our fingers turn to flippers, that's one of the things that we lose. So that's kind of one of the drawbacks to this, 
and the gentleman that was uh, was introducing it that I saw the other day, um, yeah, it looked great in a controlled environment. I have questions of whether it could be done uh, under stress. I, I don't know. Um, you know, maybe you can. Uh, but my slide's got to be forward. I'm going to grip the first shell and bring it up by my index finger and, and my thumb and my pinchers. And I'm going to grab the next shell and I'm going to stack them. I'm going to drop the first shell in and feed both shells in at the same time. So again, I grab it with my pinchers. I grab the other one. I stack them. And I load them in two at a time. Okay? So I can get several rounds in quickly, but even if I'm on my other shoulder here, where is the gun in relation to where the potential threat could be? Okay. So it takes me a little bit longer to, and I'm going to use this little hallway here, everybody. I don't have one in the chamber, but to punch the gun out, roll it back, and get it back into, into action. Okay. Um, could be a little bit slower than if I'm here loading and then, you know, driving the gun out. So just, just another, another way to do it. So emergency reload. Okay, obviously we want to apply tactics. We don't want to stand there. We want to get offline, create distance. If we can get to a piece of cover or a barrier, that's what we want to do. We'll get to apply tactics in a little bit. Okay, um, there's two different methods, though, for loading a single round into these. Okay, uh, one is I can pull it out and I can cup it and come underneath and drop it by turning, turning the shotgun. Okay, then my hand is in place and as I drive the shotgun out, I can actuate the slide forward or the pump forward and then shoot my shot. Okay, so we can do that relatively quickly. My preferred method though is to come over the top. So I open up the action, I grab the shell, drop it in, run the slide forward and bring it back into my shoulder. Okay, make sure you drop brass to the rear. Okay. It's, it's funny when it happens here in a controlled environment, but we don't want that shotgun shell in backwards. So when I was talking about how we set up our, our side saddle or our side caddy, okay, and which direction the brass goes, uh, when we're talking about these load techniques, it makes a difference, okay? So uh, for the one that I just did, if I'm brass up, okay, it works out better because as I pull it out of the carrier, the brass automatically comes to the rear as I cup it, drop it in. And then for you, Joe, depending on which method you use, uh, got to watch that bolt handle, but I can either slap it there or if I come underneath, which is a little bit better for, for a semi-auto with the bolt release there, that sets my hand up for the bolt release and then I can just slide it forward. You can try it both ways. So we're coming underneath, I'm inadvertently going to hit that bolt release. Yep. Yeah, so see, especially with that extended one, see, mm -hmm. see which one works. Just, just make sure you might have to roll your hand underneath mm -hmm. to actuate that and then bring it forward. So kind of play with it and see, see what works, okay? Um, but the, the two different methods that we can do to emergency reload a shotgun. So I've got one round in the chamber and that's how we're gonna do it. We're gonna shoot one and then know that we're going to empty or what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna actuate the slide uh, or the pump on the shotgun because I'm not gonna be able to count in an adrenalized state. And when I get that click, that's gonna be my indication that, hey, I've got to put some bang bangs in this thing, okay? So I'm here, threat, it comes up, I had to shoot again, I get a click, I'm gonna open the bolt, I'm gonna turn it, I'm gonna come over the top on this one, drop it, run it forward, I'll come underneath on this one, so on and so forth. And I was just switching between the two techniques each time I did it. So one of them is going to be uh, a little bit more intuitive for you. And that's why we do this. You guys get to try the different techniques because dexterity does, does play in this a little bit and how our shell setups are. Okay. Does everybody understand the technique? Everybody understand the technique? Okay. So what we're going to do on the threat command is I want you to do six, shoot one. Okay. 
actuate the action, make sure you get a click, open it, drop one in, emergency reload, shoot one. But I want you to do that six times, okay? Now, obviously, although I will state this, is after we shoot the first one and we get that first click, we know that I'm only dropping one round in there, so you don't have to get another click. Okay, well, we're gonna do that six times. Does everybody understand? Yep. Just like I did it up here. Okay, good. All right, here we go. Emergency reload, single shots. Threat. Good, good, good. Everybody get through all six. Yes, sir. Okay. What I want you to do is get them up into your workspace. And I want you to, I don't know, load anywhere from two to six rounds into them. Two to six rounds into them. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to work proactive and emergency reloads. So I had you anywhere from two to six rounds in there. I'm going to call the prescribed number of rounds, okay, and then a threat command. Okay, You're going to shoot the prescribed number of rounds. If you don't get a click, okay, once that's done and your threat scans are done, proactive reload top off with the amount that you shot. So if I say two rounds at a high center chest threat, shoot your two rounds, conduct your scans, get it in your workspace, conduct your proactive reload of two rounds. Okay? If I say six rounds to the high center chest, okay, or seven, okay, since six was the max number, seven to the high center chest, okay, when you get a click, what do we do? Reload. Emergency reload, right? Okay until you get the, the number of rounds. So if you only had, had three in there, we got to do four emergency reloads, okay? At the end, make sure we conduct our scans, make sure we completely top our guns off, or at least with a couple, so we do that. We're gonna do this a couple times, okay? Everybody understand what we're doing? Anybody got any questions or concerns? Okay, feeding the beast, here we go. All right. Two rounds, two rounds. Assess your work through your sights and scan and top them off. Threat. Don't forget your scans in that. Thank you. Yep, it's a full fight and then we do that when we get a chance. Right, here we go again. Ready position of choice. High ready, low ready, over the shoulder roll. Make sure you're trying the different ones. Four rounds, four rounds. Assess the scan and then top them off. Threat. Shotgun's a little bit different animal. Yeah, it's a lot, a lot bigger than a pistol. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit different animal. It takes it takes some work with it. That's why we spend so much time doing this. Six rounds. Six rounds. Assess the skin and top them off or emergency reload if you need to. Threat. Sites, 
and a scan. I'm going to top it off, keep my head up, good spectrum of awareness, okay, and reassess, and I'm done. And then we'll go, go back the other way. Two shots to the high center chest, two shots to the high center chest, stepping to the left, stepping to the left, assess and scan, and then top them off. Threat. Oh, wow. So, Patrick was nice enough to set this up for us, okay? So, he's got, got a shell in the chamber, and then there's one, one on, the, uh, on, the, on the feed carrier, okay? And then, then we've got some in the magazine. So, yeah, it's pretty bad because if I try and, uh, you know, put the, put the slide forward, you know, the bolt forward, uh, it's, it's an inline malfunction. Uh, there's something already occupying the space that something else wants to occupy. Okay, so let's see how we can rectify this. <laughs> Genius. Look at that, simple fix. Brilliant. So all I did is, is the, uh, the pump wasn't all the way to its length of travel in the rear. Okay, I just pulled it back just a little bit. That one So he just hadn't track. traveled? Yep. Okay. And then because that one came up on, on the feed ramp or the, or the, uh, Feed lips, feed carrier, whatever you want to call it. I'm not big into terminology, as y'all can tell. Um, there wasn't one on there. There wasn't one on there, so I could just close it up. Now you've got a loaded round in the chamber. You got the ones in the magazine. All right, stepping to the right, stepping to the right. One round, assess and scan, and then top it off. Threat. You got it, Wes. Better late than never. Dude, it's backwards. That's Dude. okay. I'm just Man, it's cold. It's okay. It happens. It happens a lot. See, see, I didn't even step. I just. All right, going to the left. Going to the left. Three rounds. Three rounds. Assess and scan, and then top them off. Threat. Going to the right, going to the right. Four rounds, four rounds, assess and scan and then top them off. Threat. Okay, last one everybody, last one. Going to the left, going to the left. Four rounds, four rounds, assess and scan, and then top them off. Threat. We're gonna be stepping to the left, stepping to the left. Three rounds in the high center chest, assess and scan, and then top them off. Stepping to the left. How many shots? Three, sir. Threat. Good job. All right. Stepping to the right. Stepping to the right. Four rounds. Four rounds. Assess and scan. Top them off. Threat. America. Hey, so the, what we're going to do this last one here, okay? We're going to, I'll give you the step, you know, whichever direction we're going to go, everything is the same, but you're going to shoot whatever is in the gun, okay? 
everybody's a little bit different. <laughs> okay, that's why I asked Steve how many you had in in there. Oh, nice. If we had 24 in there, uh, we weren't going to do that. Remember the advertisement? So on the, the 24 has to use the hat load on Sunday and shoot it all week. Yeah. You shoot for two weeks. Yeah. So what? Whatever is in your chamber and in your tube, okay? We're gonna shoot it until it, you get a click. Okay, don't, don't try and count them, just get the click. You're gonna emergency reload one, okay? Emergency reload one, shoot it, emergency reload another one, but then assess your work through your sights, make sure you got your desired effect, you should have with this many rounds. But so you got one in the chamber, start your scans. With the proactive loading method that I taught you guys, it can be done without muzzling anybody while I am doing my scans. I can be topping off off my side saddle or pocket while I'm doing my scans, but the important thing is to have one in the chamber. So if you have to uh, put one in somebody, you at least got one in the chamber, okay? So empty it, reload one emergency. Yes, sir. Fire it, Yes, sir. reload one emergency, Yep. scans, Reload. Yep, and then top your guns back off again. Okay. Yep. Excellent. Everybody got that? Steve, if you get if you get miscounted and you get to like ten or something like that, <laughs> just hold what you got. Sure. Okay. Or or shoot. Continue <clears throat> shooting. I don't. It's up to you. It's up to you. All right. Get them in a ready position of your choosing. Everybody knows the drill. Here we go. Threat. This works. Yeah, for 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 especially for these classes and stuff that does. Yeah, does this works work. very well. Okay, that that single lateral step, uh, it's enough to disrupt somebody's decision making process, buy us a little space, get us off those train tracks as that freight train's coming. Okay, um, the environment might inhibit us or limit the amount of uh, distance we can get on that first step, uh, but if we have the ability to take more than one step. Uh, we we want to do that, okay? If something or someone isn't inhibiting me from from movement, uh, because the more steps that we can take, we can create distance, which buys us time, which allows us to do the action that we're trying to do, which in this case is get the gun up and shoot, okay? Um, <clears throat> so we're going to add multiple steps going laterally, and most of y'all have done this before. When we take a single step, we step and drag, okay? Anything over a step. I want you to turn your hips in the direction of travel, okay? Keeping your head and eyes, at least your periphery on where your target or thread is, because if we turn away, they're gonna move. And then I reset my own OODA loop and I gotta get caught up in, a, in the backside of that cycle of initiative. So we at least wanna keep them, keep them in our periphery, okay? And take however many steps we need until I can start to get the gun out and then plant my feet and turn my hips in the direction of travel where the uh, shell pattern is going to go, or the the uh, the uh, shot pattern is going to go. Okay, so when I have the ability to take multiple steps, what type of opportunities do I create for myself? Angle. Angles is one. Cover what, maybe. I could possibly be moving to cover if I'm been been searching and seeking cover. I can I can move to that piece of cover. Uh, there's a third one. Escape. Yeah, escape, run away. Run away, if, if something isn't keeping us there, uh, I someone, uh, we might have created an opportunity to, to, for an open door that I can edge sta exit stage left or stage right, okay? Now, we're not just gonna run away today because that, that defeat the purpose. We're not here to do a PT event, okay? Paul, if you, if you want to run a few laps, yeah, we, can, we can get that in. I know how you like to, like to stay physical. Self-flagellation. But, um, so, we're, we're going to do this one at a time with a big conga line uh, just because uh, because of the angles and the splatter off. We don't want, I don't want to have multiple people out here. And if we 
we're doing going to do it laterally, but I don't want somebody shooting and actually just get a little bit of ricochet. We shouldn't because everybody should be shooting lead, and it just splatters and falls. Uh, but prior to us taking lunch, I did hear some bounce back and go on the roof back there. Um, so just for safety wise, we're going to do it one at a time. Okay, uh, two to three steps, set your feet, and then shoot the prescribed number of rounds. Okay, everybody tracking so far? Okay, so I'll shoot a quick demo on this. I'm going to use this target right here, and I'm going to go to the right. Okay, so on the threat command, I'm going to keep that uh, target that's in front of me there and in line. I'm going to take two or three steps and set my feet, drive the gun, and shoot. Uh, two to three rounds and assess the scan and top them off. Okay, so I'm here. Threat. Start to move. Plant my feet. Assess my work through my sights. I'm going to conduct my scans. And top it off. Check my world and safety, and then relax. Step to the back of the line. Threat. Two to three rounds. Threat. And then you can top it off there, you can step off to the side and top it off. Threat. Okay. Give me one more on there. All right. Now get it up in your workspace and top it off. Yeah. Okay. Threat. So we're going to do turns now, okay? And there isn't anything fancy on turns, okay? We're going to do left turns, right turns, and we are going to do 180s. Uh, you guys have probably heard me talk about before. For for the most part, with 180s, in my opinion, this is in my opinion, uh, since people aren't stalking us and setting up ambushes and that. Uh, I mean, could there be a chance that that something could happen behind us? Yeah, especially with you know active shooter, active killer things that are going on. Uh, but if we have a good spectrum of awareness and we're looking around, chances of it kicking off behind us, uh, you know, in my opinion, are fairly slim. Okay, but we have to train for the different things within uh, those three concentric circles that I talk about, and and that ambush or, or action behind us kind of falls out on that plausibility, the out, outlaying one, uh, which is uh, kind of those anomalies. So I said, if I'm walking around looking. I'm going to be somewhat turned, but we're going to do 180s too because it's a good exercise in body awareness and especially with the shotguns that are a titch bit longer than the rifles that we shoot most of them, especially if uh, you bring bring out the daddy shotgun uh, with, a, with a, is that a 26 or a 28 inch barrel? Uh, they didn't have anything yeah. longer. <laughs> I, mean, I was hoping long. for like a 40 inch barrel. Like a 40? <laughs> Uh, 32. 32, yeah. Okay, Some at least give it up on 33s. You know? the, yeah. the old duck guns. Um, but, uh, you know, so so we got to be, be muzzle aware. Okay, so I, I'm not going to shoot this one, guys. I'm just going to gonna talk about it. Uh, we can use any of the three ready positions like we've been doing. Just to be conscious of everybody else. If we're in that high ready, we might have to come bring it down a little bit just a titch higher. Uh, we don't have to come way up here, you know, to the Charlie's Angels. 
uh, to get it over their head. But as long as it's averted up, just, just be cautious. That over the shoulder roller works well. And I said, as far as turns go, there's nothing, nothing crazy about it. The only principle uh, that I don't want you to do is step back. Okay. Number one, in my opinion, when we step back, it's kind of a defeatist attitude, and we're always cultivating a good aggressive mindset. It's the only thing defensive about what we're doing, in my opinion, is somebody else picks the time and a place to mess with us. After that, we got to uh, switch over that cycle of initiative, become aggressive, become the apex protector. Okay, uh, stepping back, uh, even though they do it in a lot of traditional martial arts when they get into into a deep stance, is kind of defensive in nature, which those traditional martial arts are very defensive in nature. Um, and that's kind of a defeatist attitude, in my opinion. So uh, I, don't, I don't like you stepping back. And then, then the real um, bad, bad part about that is when we step back, we're stepping into the unknown, uh, and none of us really walk backwards. Uh, we try and do it out here. I've watched a couple of y'all kind of jumble, you know, because of the undulating terrain and, and the debris that's out here. Uh, but in that adrenalized state, if I step back and I hit a piece of, piece of trash or a curb or something, and I end up on my backside, uh, that's a real bad place to be uh, when I've got one or multiple people on top of me. So we want to try and stay upright and, uh, as much as we possibly can. Uh, but other than that, it's not crazy. I turn, I identify my threat, I lock my eyes on where, once I've identified that threat, move my gaze to where I want my sights and, and shell to go, okay, or pattern to go, and then I'm just going to step into it. Okay, as I go to step into it, I can either cut the angle and step. Now my feet are going to be shifted so it's irrelevant and I drive the shotgun out. Or I can step out so my stance is still the same and I drive the gun. Okay? It doesn't really matter to me as long as we're in that good aggressive stance to be able to control the shotgun. So again, I can step through once I've identified the threat and shifted my gauge, drive it up, safety off, check my sights and that the situation hasn't changed and then shoot until I get a desired effect. And then the scans and top and off is still is all the same, okay? All right, we're gonna shoot two rounds to the high center chest, two rounds to the high center chest, assess your work through your sights, scan and top off. Here we go, and threat. Joe's giving all kinds of teaching moments. Yeah. Wow, look at that. Why am here? Yeah. So, if you guys want to come on over. Shotguns are weird. I, I don't even know what to call that. Let me see that. <laughs> I, I, that's I, an aw shucks. That's, I, that's sinful, whatever it is. So, I, I know what happened. I just, I don't know what you would call it. Um, so, if somebody wants to name this, that's cool. Uh, we can name it the no, cluster. We'll name it in the comment section. <laughs> yeah, the cluster F or something. Beep. Um, but what happened is. Uh, when the when the bolt reciprocated is uh, and and the and the shell came back on onto the loading gate, uh, the uh, the piece that holds it in there it just let go or, or maybe there's a piece of debris in there and it it uh, it got stuck so the the next shell in the magazine started coming out with it. Okay, um, let's see if we can get this clear without taking a finger off. Okay. Just finger bang it, just to push it up. Yeah, I did it. You just pushed the one forward? Yep, so so all I did, guys, is uh, is I pulled back, made sure the bolt was there, stuck my finger and pushed the, the second round back into the magazine and let it go and it loaded that first round and you should be good to go after that. So, um, but yeah, I, you see all kinds of stuff in classes. I've never seen many, it before. How many is that for you now? It's, it's two. two. Um, so, so it's a good learning experience for everybody um, that the just weird stuff can happen, but it's, it's better for it to happen here uh, than for you to happen when you're gonna, gonna employ that thing. So, all right, three rounds, three rounds, assess and scan, top them off, and threat. And I did not look. I did not look like you asked me to. Okay. Thank I, you for I will, calling yourself out. I will I, own it. I do appreciate that honesty. Yep. It's, 
it's real easy to do here, Abner, because we know where the target is and, mm -hmm. and we know it's not going to move in that. Um, but, you know, out, out in the world, uh, identifying where that thread is, shifting your gaze to where we want to, uh, you know, put our shot and our sights to be off of where that thread is. Uh, and one of the things that I've started doing in the class is I've got some targets uh, with pistols and that and teaching people to, hey, identify that threat, but then shift your gaze to where you want the bolts to go. Because that's one of the reasons why people get shot in the hand so much is that, hey, you know, we, yeah, we identify the threat, what they have, because that thing is threatening us, a gun, knife, or whatever, and our world turns into this little toilet paper tube because of adrenaline, cortisol, and that, but they never shift their gaze to where they actually want to put the bullets. Right. And so they bring the gun into their line of vision and start pressing the trigger while it's still looking at the gun. That's why so many people, uh, good and bad, get shot in the hands. Um, so that identifying and then shifting your gaze and driving it, uh, you know, is important. Okay. So, Thank you. Cool. Two rounds. Two rounds of test and scan and top it off. Threat. You know, Wes asked, when, when do you put your safety on? Is it, uh, do you do it after your scans or do you do it before? Okay, uh, I advocate putting it on prior to your scans. So we have a threat that's in front of us. We shoot until it's a threat no more. Once I determine that it's not a threat, I got a desired effect and I break the cheek weld, safety goes back on just like with an AR. Now there's a couple exceptions, like I have a different protocol for an AK but these safeties are pretty intuitive um, because there's not an active threat right then. I'm doing, conducting my scans to see, is there somebody else that I got to give a little bit of love to, you know? And so I want to have it on safe and it should be intuitive that once I identify that threat, shift my gaze again, that the safety goes off and I drive it into my line of vision. Okay. Does that answer it there, Wes? Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, make sure those safeties are on uh, as soon as we start those threat scans, just to, just to be safe. And, uh, you know, if we get startled for whatever reason, uh, a lot of times our trigger finger goes into that trigger guard and we don't want to inadvertently have that gun go off and we don't want it to. Okay. Four rounds, four rounds. Assess your work through your sights, scan with safety on, and then top them off. Here we go. Threat. Rounds, three rounds, assess and scan, top them off. And threat. Ooh, that was creepy. Didn't have one in the chamber. I'm a quick learner, you only have to tell me three times. <laughs> so again, big thing guys is we know where the targets are here, okay, and they're not moving or anything. So we can do our movement all in, in one motion, but out in the world, we have to acquire that threat first, understand that they're a threat, that they met the preamble, shift our gaze to where we want our sights to go and where we want that shot pattern off of what that threat is. So like I was telling Abner, um, I, one of the big reasons that I, I deduce why people get shot in the hand so much out in, in real altercations and also uh, in force on force is yeah, we identify that they're a threat, okay? We look and see what it is. I'm looking at Joe, I see that shotgun. Oh, I gotta get my shotgun up, but guess what? I don't avert my gaze because that's the thing that can hurt me. And our world tor turns into this toilet paper tube, okay? We know it's gonna happen, okay? And it's okay. That's why we institute those threat scans after to break ourselves out of it and open us back up to, to this full 360 world. But if my gaze is there, where do I drive the shotgun or the firearm that I have? Into my line of vision, right? If my line of vision is on, on that gun, and the gun comes up, guess where the shot pattern goes? Into the shotgun, or the hand, if it's a handgun up here. So we have to, have to work that once I've identified that it's a threat, I shift my gaze up to his high center chest, in this particular case, to where I'm going to drive my sights and where I want that shot pattern to go. Okay? So identifying it's a threat and, and doing that prior to the turn is important because they're, they're moving around and, and not standing still. So I've got to turn 
and notice I stepped out. Okay, this is the one particular which will help you guys out. Otherwise, I don't like to overcomplicate things. But this helps open my hips up for me to turn this way just by moving my foot a little bit so I don't get that, that pelvic bind. But I got to see, identify that it's a threat, shift my gaze, and then again, we can either cut the angle and step through. Now my feet are going to be flip-flop from my normal right-handed stance. It doesn't matter. I'm going to be in the stance or I can step out. It doesn't really matter. Remember, identify your threat, shift your gaze, step into it, drive the gun, and it's stationary shooting. Two rounds at a high center chest. Two rounds at a high center chest, assess the skin, and top it off. Threat. Abner, did we, we look or did we blind turn? I think I, I think I looked. No, I didn't. I just rotated, didn't I? Thank you. Yep, you're welcome, sir. Once you get them all topped off, face me. Threat. Whatever direction you want, left or right, I'll leave it up to you. Be muzzle aware as we're going, okay? We have to be able to work in and around people with firearms if we want to be a responsible armed citizen. So watch your muzzles, watch your trigger fingers. Okay, identify the threat, shift your gaze. Three rounds to the high center chest. Three rounds to the high center chest, assess and scan and top them off. Threat. Guys, last time with the 180, last time with the 180, okay. You guys know that I don't do a whole lot administratively. I want you to, to grab the gun and do things like you're going to work to build good habits. But in this particular case, okay, you're going to shoot till you run dry, okay, and then leave your shotguns dry because we're going to go to patterning and stuff, so we got to switch to buckshot. So we're going to leave them dry just, just for this particular exercise, okay? So you're going to shoot your guns dry, okay? You can still go through your, your scans and that to build that routine, but just don't load them back up, okay? Okay, excellent. Whichever direction you want, whichever direction you want, shoot them dry, assess and scan, threat. Milder than I was expecting. Mm -hmm. It really is. You're not ported. It's not ported at all. Not at all. That is straightforward. 870. Just cut down. What you? What? No, no. Your first. Your first round. Make your first round that one. Okay. I only brought two. How come you all keep bagging Where's up? Where's the safety on this? Right side. Right it kicks a lot less than I thought it would. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, triangle. Here, have a look. That is a cool 12 ish. Is that a red dot or a fiber optic? That's fiber optics. No batteries at all. It actually runs on fiber optics. Hmm. And then there's a vial of tritium, gaseous tritium inside, so it glows at night. That's pretty neat. Yeah. All you do is just center it and just nail them. And then I modified this piece and, lo and sewed up a piece of paracord loop so that I introduced the sling inside the loop and then hook. And it gives me this effect. So, so when you're when you're doing left side and then right side, whoop, and then right side, all you do is just pass it over, and you don't have to worry about it choking you. And at the store, you just swing it around to the back. So the the lower we go in the number, the bigger we are in the shot size. Okay. The double odd buck has nine pellets uh, that are 36 caliber each that are in there. Okay, so that's a, that's a lot of firepower going going down range. That's the larger of the buckshots. 
You've got triple odd buck. Uh, you don't see it very often. Okay, it's even bigger. Um, and then we go into the bucks, the number one, number two, number three, and number four. Okay, uh, and they get smaller as they go and more, more pellets that are in there. Uh, one of the problems with, with, with buckshot or with any of these uh, uh, sh shot sizes is all these are lead. Okay, uh, Paul, you'd mentioned something about steel. The, the steel came around uh, for the hunting community because it's not toxic. Okay, so in, in the 90s, uh, actually it was in the late 80s, the environmental group started complaining for the duck and goose hunters, and they were like, hey, lead is toxic. Okay, we, we don't want uh, to, to make the waterfowl that you're shooting dead toxic, okay, in, in the water and things. So they, they mandated that uh, waterfowl hunters shoot non-toxic, which equated to steel. Since then, they've, they've used different, different metals, bismuth and, and several other things, that it has the density of lead, because lead is extremely dense. Uh, Steel is very hard and goes very fast and it goes right through and it doesn't have a good kinetic energy transfer uh, to, to kill the waterfall that they're trying to kill. Uh, but as far as uh, protective type stuff goes, it's all, it's all lead. And environmental companies had not dictated that we change anything yet. Um, but lead also, while it's in there, can deform. Okay, and that can affect how it's gonna fly through the air. Uh, your, your shell is set up with, you got your outer husk of the shell, you got your primer, you got your powder, and then there's, and not to insult anybody's telling you something they call a wad, which is basically a cup that your, your shot fits inside, okay? And that's in there when you shoot, and you all might have seen it, uh, the wad will come out and it's cut and it opens up like a flower and it just goes flying off, okay? Well, it only controls it to the end of the choke and then out the barrel and then those, those cylindrical, the circles of the lead, if they're deformed at all, they have erratic patterns and they go kind of all over the place, okay? Um, my recommendation is uh, don't go any, any smaller than number four buck, okay? Uh, you definitely don't want, want to use birdshot even in the house. Now, if Abner and I are at this distance, uh, that birdshot's gonna be, you know, nice and tight with the nine million pellets that's in it. And yeah, would it do damage? Absolutely. Would I get kinetic energy transfer? Absolutely. But that bird shot spreads out so much that it dissipates energy so fast that it's not good for our protective purposes. Okay. So, so what we're going to do, uh, y'all, is we're going to load up with our buckshot, okay, uh, on a, a command to go, uh, one shot to the high center chest, okay, and we're going to see what that pattern is for your particular shotgun and your buckshot load. Okay, at five yards. We'll look at them and then we're gonna move back to 10 yards and then so on and so forth till we hit about 25 or if you're completely starting to get off of the cardboard, uh, then we'll cut it off there. We know what the limitations are. A powder, meaning a heavy, heavier powder charge, okay? Just be, be conscious that it's gonna have more recoil. It's gonna have more recoil. Oh, this is triple out buck. Is that triple? You well, there, there is, um, there is some of it. Consider offset or anything right here. Cool, we'll see it. I don't know how many are in the triple off but we'll find out. Yeah. No, you're designed to shoot pretty close up. All right, everybody, in a ready position of your choosing. One shot to the high center chest. Threat. Four, six, Looks like seven. Looks like seven, okay, with triple odd buck. All right, go ahead and make sure if they're unloaded, open them up. Okay, make sure they're on safe. Uh, I don't have to look, that's okay. Thank you though, Abner. Uh, control your muzzles and look at, let's walk down and see what we got here. Yeah, that's two, four, oh no, I'm sorry. Two, four, six, eight pellets. Is that a slug? Uh -uh. I don't know if a, if a slug got in there or not, but I mean, that's buckshot. They're all the same. Look at how tight that Holy is. Holy crap. Well, it's the same you as... see any pellets behind it? Flight control wad. It, it, well, it is a flight control wad, so... Wow. You got a real tight one, too, John's Joe? Insane. Joe's is ridiculous. Yep. Yeah, so... Shot, you're shooting a flight control wad. So it wasn't a slug. That's impressive. Hey, everybody look at it. So five yards here, okay, that, that's nine pellets. 
Wow, it's, that's a it's, bad day. It's still encased in, in, in the wad, in that flight control wad. That's why it's so tight. And that's what I maybe thought, but who knows, a slug could have got in there. So now that's the difference. Now let's look at some, some other people. I, I gave you a flight control wad also, but it started to open up some. Uh, do you got flight control? That was me. Or that's you, that's flight control. What are you shooting there? Uh, that is... No, it's not that good. Yeah, so it, it opened up a little bit. Okay, that's, that's good stuff, two hornet critical defense. Um, where, where was your, your bead? I rushed it. No, okay, so so, uh, so a couple, that, that hey, a couple bad. things, guys. Yeah. Um, that it, you rushed it, and that's no problem. And I was going to bring up earlier, but so when I talked about it in the classroom, okay, we we do have to get sight alignment because we can miss with a shotgun. We definitely can miss with a shotgun or get a perfect. Now, is is homie having a bad day? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, but it does bring up especially out of that barrel. Yep. It, yeah, we're getting a lot more feet per second. But then as we go to, to non-flight control, and this is just the wad here, wad, yeah. um, but we see how, how we're opening up even at five yards, but that, you know, that's good, good terminal. Uh, that's eight and nine millimeters in one hit. Yep. Um, let's see, this one's horrible. I don't know who shot that. Okay. Is this US? Yeah. Yep. So again, you know, still, still really good. We can see how, how we're opening up uh, just because of the, the Technology of the wad there, nice and tight. Okay, here we go. Threat. Lord have mercy. Okay. That is a fireball and a half. And go ahead and safe them or open your actions. Go down and look and see how we started opening up. Still inside. So guys, if we look at some of this, the, the federal flight control stuff, even at, even at 10 yards, okay, uh, it's still held in, the, in that wad and, and it's just one big hole, okay? Um, yeah, is that destructive? Absolutely. Um, do we want a little bit of spread of pattern? I don't know, that's something that you have to come up with. I mean, the whole point of having, having multiple pellets in there is to get that kinetic energy transfer in, in multiple spots, so. Um, the, the flight control wads does, does hold extremely tight. Um, it allows us to have farther distances uh, with buckshot reliably to where we want the rounds to go. But part of the you know thing with a shotgun is that pattern and that kinetic energy transfer in multiple places. So uh, I'm, I'm not saying that it's good, bad, or otherwise. You just have to make the decision and think about it when we're when we're thinking about what ammo we're going to stoke in those Maybe guns. Maybe if our tactical problem is only 12 meters. Flight control might not be a great idea. Right. Yeah, you might want a little bit more of a spread. So just regular buffered, buffered uh, buckshot. When he's talking about buffers, they put 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 a little buffer in between to help keep the keep the pellets from getting damaged in that. Some of your more high end buckshot will have have buffer in it. Okay. Let's do the same thing at 15. See what happens. 15 yards. 15 yards. Let's see what happens. Remember to aim, no suckers. All right, one round to the chest. Threat. Ow! All right, safety's on and or chambers open. And let's go down and see how they did this time. Oh, got a flyer. Oh boy. Yeah, so you're starting to get a little bit of spread there. You know, and the funny thing is this is still not horrible. Yep, yeah. starting to open up just, yeah. just a tinge. Yeah, that's a lot. Just you can tell by the way. And this dude is skinny, but we're we're about at the pride of limitations at. We'll see where it's at when we go back to 20. Years. I think this one I think I was over here a little bit more on my aim. Oh, okay. So that that might have been it. Too. I might be able to tighten that up a little bit. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. The, 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 when, when, when you get hit with those, they're not quite nine in that one because it's a 20 gauge. I, I'm, but still, that's devastating. But that's still, that's good and tight there. Um, that, these higher ones, as we were going, she was aiming up, up more than that. So, so, yeah, so they're right right where they need to be. But we'll see what, what we can do at 20. Oh, boy. What? One round of buckshot into the high center chest. Or wherever you want to aim. Thank you. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Threat! Is that 
that's the wad. Yeah. And then that's my pattern. But I think I moved. The shots open way up. Man, that is really tight. And, and Flight control out cylinder bore that barrel. That is really That's tight. impressive. That is really tight. Yeah, this Pretty is good. cylinder bore. It's not even IC. It's Pretty good. What cylinder is IC? bore. Seeing those deformities. What is I'm, IC? Not, I'm not a 12 gauge dude. Ask what is him. IC? Improved cylinder. So improved cylinder is a little tighter than cylinder. Yeah, boy. This is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> Out of a cylinder bore barrel. This isn't even IC, it's cylinder bore. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's hard to say. A lot of these are, you know, yeah, IC or cylinder, but yeah, it's, it's that flight control lot. When you say this one works well with improved cylinder? It, yeah, or, or, or no cylinder, or some, some claim you could shoot it through a modified. I don't know. I don't want to be the guy to test it. I yeah. emailed uh, Carlson choke tubes. Mm -hmm. I was in one of the choke tubes and I asked them. And they said specifically only through cylinder that one was bore even tighter or than the cylinder last one, for their brand. Okay. Like I said, I wouldn't want to be the dude to test this it. This um, um, it's because there's not much constriction at the end of the barrel. <coughs> so. That's crazy tight. Yep. It's, it's that flight control lot, man. I mean, it's. In this gun. Yeah. He yeah. shot it. In his the way gun, they tumble it, so I don't know, like my 15 yeah. is this gun uh, just likes that. Yeah, yeah. Scott's, Scott's uh, 20 to be bigger, my 870 the there too, it's, it's still though. super tight. Yeah, only one of my... All right, here we go. Single shot to the chest. Threat. Ow! Out of a 12 inch barrel, that is not as bad as I thought it was going to be. It's a bad day for him. Yeah. So how many of those? How many of those oh, are the new outliers okay. from 25? Uh, we'll, we'll one, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All of this is 25. I know it is because all of this is from before. This is all 25, Shane. Sure. I'm still favoring. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So yep. So y'all. As everybody can see, and I'll continue down the line, and Steve, like I said, we'll shoot you here in a minute. Uh, we learned the limitations of the load that we have in the gun and, and, and our guns for buckshot. But isn't that a handy piece of information to have? We're going to employ this uh, for our protection. A absolutely. Absolutely. Everybody. Let's, so, let's be real. Well, with that, y'all, um, you know, think about it. If we're going to employ this, uh, you know, the context we're going to employ it, uh, for most of us, probably home defense. Think about what's the longest distance that you would shoot in your house, okay? And then take that in this little exercise that we did. Yeah. Uh, you know, are are we outside the limitations? Do we have to look at a different load, um, or are we within it? And that that'll give you a good idea how to how to employ it. Okay. We have a variety of sighting systems that are here. Uh, for those of you that have adjustment, if they're far off, we can make some quick adjustments. Okay, this is kind of though an introduction and to get y'all to understand, hey, on your own time, if it has vast adjustments, it needs how to do it. Okay, um, but to give you an idea, so uh, what you'll see is with these different sighting systems, uh, whether it's a red dot or a fiber optic or it's the excess uh, sights that are on there, the small dot, uh, uh, rifle sights, a bead, or, or ghost rings, uh, how our accuracy is affected is, is partially affected by our fundamentals, but also those the sighting systems on these things. So we're going to do it at 25. Does anybody need a refresher in the seated position? I know everybody has gotten, uh, Patrick, I'll come down and make sure I help, help you with it, uh, but everybody here has done seated position in the rifle classes, so we should be good to go on that, okay? So we're going to shoot it from the seated. The one thing that I will say when you get into the seated position with this and shoot, when the recoil comes back, roll with it, okay? Literally and figuratively, okay? As it comes back and rocks you back, okay, go with it because these are, do have pretty significant recoil. Okay, don't try and muscle and fight it. It's just going to beat you up. It's just going to beat you up. And that's the reason we get beat up enough why we're doing it from a seated position as opposed to the prone. So we have that ability to kind of roll with it as it comes through that recoil. And your semi-auto, that will absorb some of it a little bit better. Um, but these do have pretty significant recoil, okay? So just kind of, kind of roll with the punches on this one.
Okay, makes sense? Yeah. All right, uh, we got fresh targets that are down there. So let's cover down on the target. Let's start getting into our seated position. All right, a single shot from the seated position. Use that heart as an aiming point. Use that heart as an aiming point. And one well-aimed shot. And go ahead and begin. Five yards. Very, very nice. Flight really control. good. Flight control, 25 oh, yards. Yep. Excellent. Oh, How'd the bird shot to you? Got him. <laughs> bird shot. Nice. Yeah. He's it, deterred. There, there's about. He's either deterred or he's more determined than ever. There, there's know. about uh, about 4,700 uh, pellets in there, mm -hmm. uh, depending on what that is. It looks like it's probably about nine shot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And uh, you you probably made them more determined because now now you've irritated them quite a bit. Good, that's what I wanted. Okay. The yeah, first five shot thousand is cuts. The first shot yeah. inside. Go ahead and begin when you're ready. Ow. All right, gents, the line is hot. Go ahead and fire when you are ready. One single round to the chest. I'll wait till you're done. Took that one. So, yeah, you're right. What was that? Um. It's the elevator, isn't it? I mean, it took that one. I just did a uh, super fast rack and it went. I just wanted to see if... Oh, the shorties? Yeah. So, like I was telling telling Abner now, some of the the newer shotguns that are out, uh, they did. Oh well, there you go. Now I went. Now I went a little too far. That's. But but Abner, it depends on what you want on that. If you want a fifty, that's about where it needs to be. If we were to jump to fifty. Okay. So um, that's like I told Paul. He's you know. I mean, if you took the now we're getting a little bit. Well. Busy, but, yep. But, but technically, that I think I actually was aiming. I don't know, man. Oh, my brain's not dialed in today. That, that's okay. okay. Like I said, it, as long as everybody gets the skills, if they have to make adjustments, that they can continue to refine as they go. That's on the threat command, okay, the first person on the left side shoots one round. As soon as that round goes off, the second person shoots one round. Well, the second person's shooting, the first person is topping it off. So just like we've been doing all day, okay? And it's gonna go down the line till we get to the end. One round, oh, I see you got, until it gets to the end to load up, okay? Once it gets to the end, now you gotta be paying attention. The first person starts with two rounds. Two rounds, two rounds, two rounds, two rounds, till we get to the end. And then three rounds, so on and so forth, and we'll do it up to five. And so, as the amount of rounds shot increase, the amount of rounds that you got to stoke back in that thing increases, and you only got the time until it gets to the end. Okay, so so don't be the one to hold up the rolling thunder. Okay. Okay. I apologize now. <laughs> <laughs> so for the first couple, she's gonna ruin the curve. <laughs> ruin the curve. All right. Oh wait, that's supposed to be two. Next one is three. Next one is three.
Next one is four. Next one is four. Go, Joe. Go, Wes. Downrange. Downrange. <laughs> With that, you know, a little bit of cognitive processing too. We got to pay attention to our surroundings, the people that are around us. Uh, you know, know what the number is we're at. So a lot of things in that drill. Um, that yeah, it's a lot of fun, but it also it's a lot of mental work and, and physical run, running the pumps. Anybody tired? A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a it's a smoker. <laughs> it's a smoker. Frank's, Frank's tired. I'm just glad We're we had such a long line. That's the thing. The more people you have here, the more time you have, <coughs> too. So if you got you got the whole whole range full, you got all Thanks, kinds. Of, yeah. <laughs> so, okay. With that, that concludes uh, today's shotgun class. Does anybody have any questions? Or anything that we covered uh, throughout the day? What Excellent. You shotgun for? <laughs> <laughs> Anything you want. Okay. <laughs> okay, cool. Good deal. Well, thanks everybody. Hey, this is the last class of the year for us. Uh, it's been an extremely successful year. Uh, we've been very, very happy. Uh, and uh, we've been successful because of y'all. Because you've come out and you've supported us and you've taken the classes. And hopefully uh, everybody has come away this year and, and today in particular uh, better prepared to protect themselves and protect people that they care about. So thank you very much uh, for making this a great year for us. We really do appreciate it. <clears throat> um, with that, we got to take a group photo, okay? And we can we do it. We'll make sure we get all these shells in here and stuff. Um, and, and Callie, you can get in here. I'll just take the picture. And then uh, we need to get these shotguns in the condition that you want them in to leave here. If that's unloaded, uh, if, they, if they're not unloaded, we'll make sure they're unloaded or verify. If they're loaded up, uh, you know, you want to load them up, we'll get them loaded up. Okay. And then after that, we will uh, pack everything up. As you know, Callie's taking some pictures. Abner shot video that will come out uh, after editing and all that. Um, <clears throat> One of the things that I keep I keep forgetting to talk about it at the end of classes, but uh, you know when we post the pictures on Facebook, Instagram, uh, we have Google what are the Google reviews in that. Uh, if you liked what we did or what you did while you were here, uh, when you go on and you make good comments that hey, you know, this was good training, I, I feel better prepared, whatever you want to say, uh, it helps us continue to bring up the classes and it gets the word out. Uh, to other people with what we're doing so we appreciate it if you if you go and do that do a little review on on any of those medias or linkedin we we share it on linkedin also especially now we've got a few classes out of state and we kind of want to get outside of just middle tennessee so that would help us a lot yep um if you didn't like something uh today or in any of the classes uh, me. I can't stop you from going on keep it to your damn self on social media but i prefer you come talk to me uh because these curriculums and, and my book all knowing that that's a live and breathing document as I find better ways to do things things that are more recent relevant and realistic uh, we change them and sometimes that comes from you guys 
so we're, we're always evolving in that. Uh, I feel free to come talk to me if there's something, uh, maybe a technique that you know that, that I haven't addressed or you didn't like the way that we did it or something was unclear, come talk to me and, and we can discuss it. Uh, other than that, I guess that's it. <laughs> thank you guys so yeah. much. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. All right, let's take a picture.